Oh my goodness. Ford are doing some incredibly dumb stuff in the last or in the last 12 months. Most of it, the media is just not reporting on it. All you need like a paid subscription to find out this information, which is just ridiculous. Because frankly, they should be exposing these shenanigans. Ford should be exposed. Everyone should be hearing about this. It's absolutely insane. And it's a kind of thing that makes me embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I've said on this channel lots and lots of times, I respect Jim Farley. I like Ford the company. And I did, but I don't anymore. How can you? How can you after hearing this? You just can't. You can't respect a company doing this kind of thing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. What a sad day it is. What a sad day it is. And I'm genuinely, this is, I, wow. I just lost the words. This is ridiculous. I mean, Ford, I thought they were, you know what? Ford came out with a media release three days ago and they said, we're an honorable company. We're transparent in all of our dealings. We value being transparent and honest. We value actually having high values. And they were lying. They were just talking out their rear ends. And I don't, I hate being negative because the truth is, the truth is the world is getting better every day. That's a fact. Very hard for the average person to actually believe that because the news is feeding us propaganda and lies and nonsense. But the truth is the reality is the world is getting better. Our children will unquestionably have a better place. And that is a result of not companies like Ford, or at least not in this instance anyway. In fact, this sets the worst example for our children you can possibly imagine. Now, I'm not talking about Ford firing 8,000 people, uh, which they just did. And they still claimed a $100 million subsidy from the Detroit government, which was actually intended for those staff. <laughs> they hired those staff. Detroit government said, we'll give you $100 million if you do this, if you take, you know, hire more people, and then they hired them and they fired them, and they got the $100 million anyway. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about Ford appealing the 1.7 billion verdict in the Georgia truck crash. I'm not even talking about Ford uh, making vehicles that frankly have the worst reliability of any vehicles made in the US right now. You think that's exaggeratory? Well, Ford spends way more than any other manufacturer. In fact, it spends more than twice as much as General Motors on warranty recalls, fixing cars, and that's not very good. And I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the fact that Ford's been completely dishonest with its employees at its plant that manufactures the Ford Escape by um, not telling them that all of them will be fired within the next probably 12 to 24 months, which is what it should do. It should be disclosing that information. Enable them to move on. Enable them to actually plan for the future. That's what Ford should be doing, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the trade secrets case. I'm talking about Ford having to pay over $100 million to a software company because they stole their software, reverse engineered it, and pretended that they didn't do it. Now, we say Chinese car companies or Chinese companies do this kind of thing, but this has nothing to do with China. This is just Ford being dishonest. Ford was recently found guilty by a federal jury in Michigan of violating a licensing contract and misappropriating trade secrets. The automaker will have to pay Versata Software $105 million following a 15-day trial. Ford licensed Versata Automotive Software from 1998 until 2015, but what did it do? Well, rather than keep on paying Versata for the software, it decided to copy it. It copied the software instead of paying millions of dollars in annual licensing fees, reverse engineered it, and then, well, kept on using it. Both companies entered a 15-year contract agreement in 2004, but Ford claimed it developed its own software so Versata would no longer be needed. The deal officially fell apart in 2014 when Ford refused to pay 17 million US dollars in licensing per year. Then the courtroom fight started all the way back in 2015. This is a true example of the big guy trying to mercilessly crush the little guy because, because he can. Well, why not? The thing is, all this time, Ford's actually been in a pretty good financial position. It's, in fact, got billions of dollars in cash sitting in the bank right now. It could have just easily paid what it owed. Instead, it decided not to. It thought, well, they're so small, we can just crush them and get away with it. And I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. This is exactly what happened. 
Following the ruling, here's what Dan Webb, attorney for Versada, said to the press. When you have a company like Versada that has expanded so much effort in developing intellectual property and software for a company to use, that software still belongs to, in this case, Versada. They built the software for Ford to have stolen the software of Versada's just so they could make a competing product and then no longer have to pay license fees to the software owner is a serious act of misconduct that we just can't allow to go on. Although Ford will need to pay up, Ford has said this won't change ongoing projects and car production. The back-end enterprise software reportedly hasn't been in use since 2014. Webb said Ford's claim simply isn't true. And the modern software it uses still has stolen Versada code to help Ford's software run. And clearly the judge, well, he says Ford is lying. Ford, the thing is, right? When you've done something wrong, when you rob the bank and you get caught, when you get caught with your pants down, what do you do? The best decision to make, right? Lance Armstrong, what did he do when he got caught? He denied it and he denied it and he denied it. Floyd Landis, when he got caught, what did he do? He denied it and he denied it. And he denied it. And finally, both of those guys came clean. When they came clean, and they were honest. They owned up to what they did. They admitted to what they did. And they end up making reparations. Well, everyone saw them in a completely different way. Everyone lost respect for those two guys. But then they gained back some measure, not all of it, but some measure of their respect when they admitted to the truth. They admitted to lying. They admitted to cheating. And Ford is still not doing that. Ford are still hanging on, still trying to lie, and the judge says, stop doing it. That's enough. Automakers and technology companies are working closer than ever to develop the next generation of vehicles. So this kind of thing could happen again. I mean, it's happened to Tesla, right? An ex-Pung staff member worked for Tesla, took away Tesla's source code for its autopilot and full self-driving, and what do you know? Went it straight to ex-Pung. Personally, I have just completely lost respect for Ford. And Jim Farley, surely he had to have some knowledge, some awareness that this happened. Now, it's possible that he didn't. And if he didn't, then, well, I apologize, Jim, but you are the head of this company. You are the CEO. You're the one that needs to make sure that these kind of scams don't happen. And frankly, I will never be confident recommending investing in Ford both personally, or any of you, at least for a number of years, until I see Ford, admit what they've done, own up to it, and do the right thing. Transparency and honesty is important. Talking about transparency, talking about honesty, talking about it being an automaker with high values, well, that just doesn't stack up right now. Think about it, right? It wasn't long ago, only a couple of months, when I reported that Ford fired staff members and gave them two hours to pack their things and leave. The thing is, right, it wasn't like Twitter. I mean, Elon has fired half of Twitter's staff, but he's given them three months pay. These staff members at Ford, they were casual employees. Sure, lots of them engineers, but they were still casual employees. They got to the rest of the week, paid, and that was it. See you later, sayonara. Frankly, the way Ford has been acting this year has been verging on unconscionable. And I'm extremely disappointed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Bye-bye.